Holy crap. This morning I'm going out to uh, get another travel case. Just like that white one. And this right here is a 14 inch travel case. Um, again, these are travel cases, not shipping cases. So don't trust that you could just ship one in here. Now this one has a BVM D20 inside of it. And the one uh, that I'm going to pick up will have two, well it'll have one A14 F5U in it. And then it will have uh, additional A series 14 F5U monitor with it. Uh, that's the bundle I'm going to pick up. It's the very last from the load um, at the studios, which was the TV studios, where I got that case and the first couple BVM D24s that you've seen that I've been working on. All right, so we're on our way to Skyway Studios. And I've got you on my dashboard here, so hopefully it's not too bouncy or loud. But we're gonna go over here to the studios and meet with a guy named Andy right past the white van here. And we'll slow down at this time. We're going here because of the post-production they do. So now we'll go through the gate here. Good morning. Yes, sir. Thank you. Have a good morning. crazy thing. I'm about to have to cut the video off for a bit. That's where they used to broadcast stuff and we'll go. Down here I'm gonna cut this off and get the stuff. It's back here towards the back. There's a loading dock back here. Whew! Alright, I'm a little out of breath. Still in the studio parking lot here. And there's the old... I don't know what the heck goes on there. As you can see they've even got like a gutter system for the lines I guess to prevent interference I'm not sure so kind of a shielding for the place of broadcast signal from up there on the hill but back behind me is the actual studio building and again this is from the post-production so let's try to flip the camera around here and hopefully you can see some of the stuff behind me but uh, it actually had two two cases. One was a 14 inch and one is for a D24, D20, just like the one I had earlier. So I'm gonna drive very slowly now back through the gates and then we'll head back to town. We'll get out of here and offload our little treasure that we picked up today. Um, now the thing about these cases is they are on wheels. I'm oh, sorry about that. There's just a ton of bugs on my windshield from uh, July and June, and it is Tennessee. So there's again that building I was telling you about where it looks like all the broadcast signals would have been sent out of into the space and atmosphere. There's actually another gate to get up there to that compound up on the hill. So that's pretty interesting. The place is locked up like like it's something important so pretty pretty crazy get through the gate here
here we are with our cases returned. Now this one over here, this is uh, one of my older cases. You've seen it in other videos. It's not, it's not one of the ones we got here. From what I can remember, the one that's in this white case, which is a D20 case as it's marked, uh, has the A-series monitor that just has an SDI card in it and it actually does not work. Now it does turn on really quickly and it tells you like a couple things and it overloads and shorts out. From what I can remember, we tested it at the studio and uh, this one should just be perfectly fine. It's got a 61D card in it and the 62HS. I need the 61D card. I can use both the tubes. They have less than 5,000 hours on them. Let's just go ahead now and we're gonna open up this one and make sure that I'm right. And uh, this case is extremely high quality, much higher quality than my other 14M 4U case over here, and it's a lot larger. Uh, but same kind of design with the hooks on the side. It's got a lot of character stickers showing where it's come from. It was made by Ascot. A flight case company out of Los Angeles, California. And it has been all over the place according to the stickers on it. Let's just lift it up. There are nice handles on all these, usually. And we'll lift this handle up and get it out of the way. Oh. So, yes, this one is the one with the 61. 61D card in it. So let's see. Okay, I've got power plugged into it. We're going to start by powering it on and we're going to just check and do some basic checks on the monitor and uh, hopefully it'll power up. So we'll give it a second to go through standby, which is generally normal. And then it should either click up, oh, there it goes, it'll click on by itself and hopefully. I hear the CRT, I feel it. Hopefully it's not the one that overloads. Okay, so there we are. So let's turn to channel one. Okay, there it is. So on these monitors, there's actually built-in test patterns. And to get to them, you just need to go to your controller and put 096, I believe, was this one. This is the very last one. But if you just type 095, it'll take you to another pattern. The D-series monitors and a series monitors have these patterns built into them that's really nice and so you can actually go in and do all kinds of checks up beforehand without actually hooking up any kind of device to it so let's see here I mean there is a little bit probably just need some degaussing hasn't been used in a while so uh, let's just hit that one more time and there's a lot of dirt and filament on the tube but Let's see if we can't pull up the hours on here. I'm going to do that. Maybe I'll go to a different pattern that's just a black screen. And we'll go down here to our status. And we should go to page two. And this one, so this one has 13,000 hours. And that's, um, so this tube's still fine. It says a CRT turn on time, which is the actual tube operational time is 10,000 hours. Still has a good amount of life left on it. One thing I'm definitely gonna do is I'm gonna remove a lot of this hardware that was for rack mounting. I won't be using it, I'll save it, but it's, uh, it's more cumbersome and it gets in the way more often than not, and I don't need it, so. I'm just going to remove the screws holding it and then I'll also do these pulls on the front. So I just prefer to get rid of it. Okay, so one more last thing I'm going to do before I store this one is I'm going to take out this 61D card. So now I can complete the set of these cards. And then this one I'll be saving for either, you know, a secondary monitor or to save for parts. But that's how simple it is to uninstall this card. Just do it with your power turned off and disconnected and everything. And then you can safely go in here and remove and replace cards. And then we'll just lift it off straight up. 
And then down here we've got our other A series monitor. Move this guy up here. And we're going to go ahead now. I've got power plugged into it. And we'll click it on and see what happens. Okay, there's that. Okay, so this one's got less hours, 6,000. Uh, but again, like I, when I was using it in the facility, it was, it was cranky, it was getting cranky. So let's see if we get out of this menu, if it will just start doing what it was doing or if it just was doing that for some reason at the facility. Start to see it's changing some color and the convergence is going crazy, kind of. That's not with me doing anything. See how the color's just all of a sudden gone all crazy. So I'm not really sure what's going on because it was all colors and now it's red only. Isn't that interesting? We'll see if this tube can be used or if it's somehow in between when we were testing it before if it burnt out uh, if it did then it's no good let's look at one of the greatest parts of this haul which were these cases specifically designed for these bvms this one has a d20 in it that was my d20 i bought earlier but uh, this case goes specifically for a d20 is what it was made for it says on its label now you can see there's some very thick i mean that's what three or four inches of just straight foam on the sides and it's got a little bit of room cut out here with some high grade carpet and a couple inches of foam on the top. And then the design isn't much different on the bottom. This is foam and, and hard dense foam. And the way that this works, is it snugly slides down on there like that and lines up at the bottom here. Click that last one and I'll show you just what makes this so special. You just can't find too many, you can't find too many cases that are perfect for BVMs. Now here's this other one again by the Ascot company. It's a little bit different, has a different color setup, but it's primarily the same. You know, it's not much different. Uh, the hardware is all pretty similar. This one has the A14 inside of it and will hold pretty much any 14 inch PVM or BVM easily. All right, here it is, the 24 inch monitor inside the case. A little bit more difficult to work around, but fits snugly in there. And now you're ready to get your tour bus and roll on to your house party. that no one's allowed to go to. So that's it. In there. Wonderful box. This is my BVM A series that I have actually had for a while. And it's the one that I have my BKM 68X in and other cards. And now I can install the 61D and have a complete monitor. And yes, now I have the most expensive 14 inch CRT on the planet. This A-Series fully loaded with all these cards would probably run at about $3,000, at least in its current condition, where the screen's relatively new. I want to show you real quickly an old haul video where I was able actually to find this card, if you believe it or not, just sitting on a pile. This is a recycler's warehouse who goes in and recycles outdated equipment, mostly from hospitals, but occasionally he does get equipment in from TV studios. Holy crap. That just goes to prove that you can find these uh, old CRT parts just about anywhere. 
And so today we're going to do a quick demo of this monitor uh, through 480p. I'm going to be using a original Xbox and component. This would have been more of a controller unit monitor. So generally it was paired with other larger monitors where this one had the controls and you could loop all the other monitors together with this one. And then you could have this one do all the controls on the screen for each individual monitor because most of the larger monitors did not come with a built-in control unit unless you did that yourself or ordered it special from Sony. Now, this monitor does have 800 TV lines and it supports 240p, 480i, 480p, 720p, and even 1080i. Uh, it has inputs now for composite S-video, component RGB and HD SDI as well as regular SDI. So again, it's one that could do a lot of things. There are some drawbacks. Some consoles have issues with trying to sync to this monitor. And so, you know, in the future, I will probably do a more in-depth review and detailing on this individual monitor. And hopefully I can find some other A series monitors that are larger because this A14 was the smallest one that they made for this A series. And then they went up to a 20 inch, a 24 inch. And I've even heard rumors that there's a 32 inch version of this monitor, which I would love to see, but I've never heard of or seen in person uh, myself. So anyway, thanks again for watching today, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this haul video. Just always be, you know, checking in with your local businesses that may have used monitors. That's my tip of the day. Uh, I want to say a special thank you again to everybody who's subscribed to the channel and supports the work that I'm doing here. And a big, huge shout out and thank you to everybody who supports this channel through Patreon. There is a link in the description of this video. And you can go there to get more write-ups, information on repairs, as well as contact me directly with any questions you may have. But thanks again, everybody, for watching today. I'll see you guys next time with some more retro content.